guys Ben here and welcome back to another video today we're going to be talking about Stargirl season 1 episode 2 sorry that this review is up a bit late I just simply didn't get around to watching Stargirl when it came out on DC Universe or the CW but next week I'm going to be on time don't worry about that I still haven't decided if I'm going to upload it on the DC Universe day or the CW day I'm kind of rooting more towards the CW day so that you guys can all watch it because I think more people are going to watch it once it's on the CW so maybe I'll go for that I don't know it could change week to week but I've been watching the DC Universe version of the show so apparently it's a bit longer it's like over 50 minutes and I think the CW version gets cut down but anyway so today we're going to be talking about episode 2 it was really really good so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year okay so yeah this episode is titled Stripe which is obviously named after what we saw at the end of last episode the robot operated by Stripe C, aka Pat. So this episode saw the introduction of his robot, his sort of mech suit that he goes in. And I have to say, some really, really good CGI. Like the whole episode, the Stripe, like CGI, never, never lets up. And it's absolutely realistic. It looks amazing. And I really liked there were some sort of sequences, like where he's testing the suit and it just looks so nice like there's something about the way this show looks I think it's mainly down to the colors because it's very nicely color graded so I'm a big fan of the way Stargirl looks right now but anyway so right at the start of the episode we have Stargirl she's flying on stripe obviously Pat comes and saves her at the start which is a reverse of what happens at the end of the episode which we'll get to very soon but yeah so we have them getting away from brainwave which then is preceded by going to a random person's house we don't know who it is at first but it turns out it's the councilman of blue valley who turns out to be the wizard he was part of the injustice society of america you saw him last episode at the start and he's very unrecognizable some of these characters are unrecognizable apart from obviously brainwave he looks exactly the same and basically they look kind of normal you know they're not in their suits or anything so it's hard to identify but then you get these sort of little clues like he gets this sort of wand out and it starts going crazy but it turns out you know because brainwave goes to his house he is there because he thinks there is a new star man and so they talk about the reason why they're in blue valley they're doing something called project new america so obviously they're changing something and you know their purpose is probably with evil intent similar to say like what lex wants to do on supergirl right now like how the fact that he wants to take over the world and you know reshape it in his vision i'm presuming it's something pretty similar to that because it's called project new america like a new version of america and so this is about the Injustice Society and their legacy is what Brainwave says. And it turns out, it seems like the wizard is pretty much not so in with the idea of what they're doing in this project. And it seems like he's sort of moved on, basically, you know, compared to, say, Brainwave, who is basically fully committed to what he's doing. And he's, you know, willing to go to the school and, you know, confront a kid. You know just like anyone he was just like roaming around and looking for this one person it's very suspicious but basically it seems like the injustice society of america has invaded blue valley and they are in sort of very high positions like brainwave is this amazing doctor apparently he's like one of the best people in the town then you've got the councilman who is the wizard You've got Stephen Sharp, aka The Gambler. He's working at Courtney's mum's place. I don't know what specifically it is, but it's something very important. So, you know, they're all around and they're controlling everything. And there was a lot of tension in this episode, especially once we go to the school at that event that they're sort of holding. And you have Pat going around like, are they going to recognize Pat? Because, you know, they're probably just going to straight up kill him. It didn't happen in the end. So let's move on to the next bit. So our man, it's revealed, survived that attack, you know, 10 years ago. He ended up tracing the Injustice Society of America all the way to Blue Valley. And so Pat wanted to help him on this mission. He knew he was alive, but he didn't end up doing it because he wanted to go out on a solo mission. And so he actually ended up dying in a car crash and apparently it was a car crash i bet you it's something to do with the injustice society who probably tracked him down and killed him then covered it up 
and so his wife died as well. So Pat is the only remaining team member alive, and yeah, he's not like an official team member, but he's part of the Justice Society of America. And so it seems like with him being the only surviving member, the other people that we saw in the photo last episode, who we thought maybe could be out there somewhere, seemingly are all dead, like that being Hawkgirl, Hawkman, and Dr. Fate. But I think what happens to them may be up in the air because they're a bit different from the other members, considering Dr. Fate is basically immortal and Hawkgirl and Hawkman, if you've read the comics, or if you've even seen Legends of Tomorrow, they can reincarnate. So, I don't know, I got a feeling maybe at one point they're gonna show up. I have a stronger feeling that Dr. Fate's gonna show up over anybody else. But, I mean, that's kind of up in the air, but for now, we presume they got killed in that attack, or maybe later. So, then we move on, we have Pat, aka Stripe, doing this training montage, and he's failing, and it looks so nice, like I said at the start of the episode, I was really impressed, and definitely Pat is my favourite character right now, he's so good, Luke Wilson kills it, and he's so intriguing all of the time, and, you know, he's definitely my favourite character right now. Okay, so we have Stripes and Brainwave at the school event. You're like, oh, they're looking at each other. They're trying to look for each other. And I'm like, oh my god, what is happening here? And turns out they don't actually meet there. But you've got Stripesy facing off against Brainwave just after. And this is at midnight because Courtney was found by Brainwave in the school and was told to come at midnight to give him the staff. And then, you know, he would probably just kill her after. But anyway, so... She is talked out of it, and she actually ends up coming, though. But in replacement of her, we have Pat, a.k.a. Stripesy, or Stripe, you know, his new nickname, according to Stargirl, by the end of the episode, going to fight Brainwave by himself. And this was amazing. It really, really got to me. I had actual chills running through me because it was the music and everything and it was just you know everything that you want you know in terms of being a hero and you know i really really like pat and i thought that moment was really really great and he says this line and i wrote this line down in my notes because i was like holy shit this is amazing and so it's someone looking for justice when he asks who are you because, you know, obviously, I don't think he probably remembers Starman's sidekick. But maybe he does. But anyway, I think it doesn't matter because he is this new reformed hero with a new name and everything. Stripe is going to take down the Injustice Society of America with Stargirl and her eventual friends when we get to them. Obviously, we saw the person who is going to become the new Wildcat already in this episode. We saw her last episode. She's a bit moody at the moment. She hasn't said much. But that's all we've seen so far. And so you have that fight, major chills, what a great moment. And so we have, at the same time, Stargirl suiting up. Obviously you had that montage earlier in the episode where she makes her suit in this sort of room where you have all these sewing machines and everything, and it's very handmade, but it was a nice moment. And so the best moment was, though, her actually suiting up and flying off into the sky. You see the moon, she's flying, she ends up knocking Brainwave back and saving Pat. And, you know, this is the reverse from what happened at the end of last episode. But Brainwave is actually incapacitated. He is defeated. And she basically fries Brainwave's brain. Like, he sort of short circuits, as Pat says. And he had a seizure, according to the doctor. So he is visited by his son in the hospital. And it seems like his son is being set up to be like a new version of him. To be like a younger version, kind of like Stargirl as a younger version of Starman. You can have the new Wildcat, the new Owlman and everything like that but you know younger versions so i think he may become brainwave if brainwave stays incapacitated at some point okay so we have a reference to ted knight who in the comics is actually starman and in the comics sylvester who is starman on the tv show is not starman he is in fact known as a few different things but his main one is star spangle kids and he currently is known as skyman so they've switched it obviously for the TV show to make Sylvester Starman and I think it's happened before, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know they just switched it and Ted Knight maybe was the original Starman before or was just like a friend that helped Starman in the Stargirl TV show, I'm not talking about the comics right now. But anyway, so you have that reference, that was a nice reference, and so Stargirl and Pat are going to work together to get justice for Starman and the Justice Society of America and defeat the Injustice Society as they team up, and Pat is officially Stargirl's sidekick 
as of right now and I'm really excited for that and the ending was very cool you got to see Icicle return and you see Solomon Grundy in some sort of cage underground and this is the headquarters of the Injustice Society of America so you have Stephen Sharp down there who is revealed to be the gambler who I totally forgot when we first saw him in this episode when we saw him with Courtney's mum and you know I totally didn't clock that because we barely saw the gambler last episode at the opening bit so yeah he's part of the injustice society you have this really cool photo of the whole injustice society on the wall i wonder when Sportsmaster and tigress are going to return i presume they're going to come back together because if you've even seen like young justice they're pretty much always linked up together so yeah that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching, if you've been enjoying the Stargirl videos as of right now and you want to continue seeing more, please be sure to leave a like, it really supports the channel and it supports, you know, getting the video out there to more people because I do want to continue making Stargirl videos because I'm really enjoying it, so keep on viewing and I'll keep on making these videos, so thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.